بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته This is our program Spirit of Values This is Dr. Tariq Rashid In this episode we will finalize the value of benchmarking that would help us to achieve a better value of excellence We stopped at the concept of types of benchmarking We can benchmark our processes, which means each process in departments should be benchmarked. This would help us to improve the process. For example, in the HR, the recruitment process, are we performing better than others? Is there a slow in the process of recruitment? recruitment? For example, evaluation, If employee evaluation. It's a process. How do we do the employee evaluation? training, development, so we define the process benchmarking. The most important is the financial benchmarking. What is the cost of the operations? And usually we try to lower the cost of the operation. What is the return of investment? We have to enhance the return of investment. Not necessarily the return of investment should be financial. For example, if we enhance our branding, our name in the market. So this is again, it's a return of investment. Benchmarking from an, from an investor perspective. What would investors, if I am a business oriented towards profit, how can we benchmark from other investors and read their perspective? Performance benchmarking is the most important. We have to check all our performance. And again, this is what we call key performance indicators. Key performance indicators. And we have lots of indicators. Who should agree? First, the departmental team as well as with their management. Then the whole organization would agree with top management for the, the, more, the most critical key performance indicators. And usually care for cost, time, quality, brand, customers, should always be in our mind. All of these have to read the key performance indicators. There are lots of uh, references, but one of the best references to go for the key performance indicators is a library of KPIs. So we agree on the performance benchmarking. Sometimes we make a product benchmarking. Can we improve our product? What are the gaps in this product? How can we enhance its quality? lower its cost, so product benchmarking is another very important benchmarking study. And the most critical also strategic benchmarking. Again, let's look for the pyramid of management. If we look for the pyramid of management, here we have top management. Top management always care for strategic uh, components, vision, mission, strategic goals, the values, which is a very critical and we, in this program, we are discussing values. So strategic performance is very important. Are we achieving our mission? Have we start in the right direction towards achieving the vision? Then we we'll come to senior management level where they start benchmarking their processes to get directly to the strategic performance and down for the operational management we read all operational processes that will help to, as to achieve the strategy. So strategic benchmarking is very important. Functional be benchmarking means each department. So HR department has some functions. We benchmark them. The financial department, it has some functions. We benchmark and so on. Functional benchmarking. Another type is best in a class benchmarking, which means let's compare ourselves with the best practice in the market, in the processes, in the strategy, relate and see where are the gaps and operational benchmarking. So all these are types of benchmarking that we can apply in order to improve the performance. The key elements of the benchmarking efforts. How can we achieve? What type of efforts we need? Management support is a must. This is the importance of leadership. And you can go back for the episodes where we discussed 
the importance of the value of leadership. So management support. Without management support, we cannot achieve any benchmarking in the process. But also define the systematic approach. Step number one, two, three. A well-defined scope in the approach, approach is very important. One of the problems, if we have what we call L-defined scope or L-defined approach, define the approach so we can go for a systematic steps following this. Research facilities, again, the importance of R&D department to make the research. I cannot benchmark without having a research. And remember that R&D is a very important unit or at least a team for research and development. What do you think the relation between R&D? Yes, in order to develop, we have to make a research. So research is an input, development is an output. A code of conduct, ethics is very important. Networking, who will connect with us? Whom team, how the team will gather? What is the network externally and internally? Train your team for the benchmarking, all the members on the process in order we can maintain excellence in performance and efforts. Internal database of study plans, program reports and results should always be there, then internal communication between the team. Facilitate communication to share success learning. And you can also get back in one of the episode for the communication value. Identifying potential benchmarking partners. Can we use other stakeholders to help us in the benchmarking? Of course. So what are the possible partners for example, standards setting organizations. We can use a certain standard. For, for example, we can go for uh, X organization and setting the standards for equality, uh, health, safety, and environment, HSE, and the uh, human resources. What is the standard organizations? We can learn from them and they could be our partners. Opinions. Opinions are very important to look for the opinion of the customer. Who is really affected by the per process is the customer. So relate to the opinions. The press, the particularly editors of trade, local press, international press. There are always a reference in what we call the per journals, the scientific journals that will give you the latest in information about a certain process. And usually to make sure that this is an international journal, Always international journals, they have what we call ISSN number, indexed classified number. Good to them, local press, where facilities or headquarters are located, check with them. Local organizations could be our partners, universities for the research, authors who publish regulations, standardizations in the field also could be very helpful partner. Government offices, market, research groups, international organization if you want to read the highest level of benchmarking go for international organizations watching group focus groups financial communities agencies involved in industry promotion and financing so we can relate to our partners read from them take help and then move to understand the best practice in market and benchmarking in the industry we have the suppliers. Suppliers are very high potential partners. So define the suppliers in the process. Define the uh, observers. Who are the observers? For example, quality control, quality auditing uh, agencies, the dealers, the customers. All of these could be partners in benchmarking. Internal resources and sources, market, our research staff, sales force in our organization, service organizations, engineering staff, purchasing department, HR, R&D, all of these would help us to benchmark whatever we want to benchmark. Service organizations, trade associations, investment banks, because banks always support lots of business and projects. They could be very helpful in benchmarking. Consultants, auditors, commercial banks, all of these will help us to identify the process 
of, of benchmarking, and they are potential for partners in benchmarking. What about the pitfalls and the criticism for benchmarking? Idea of copying others. This is always debatable. If we compare ourselves to others, are we performing better or are we taking from them? So are we copying them? How can an organization be superior if it does not innovate to get ahead? We have to read the market, to check the market and move ahead to be better than the others. How can an organization even survive if it loses track of its external environment? I cannot move without reading the external environment to compare. So this is always a debatable question about benchmarking. It's not a strategy or business philosophy. It is an improvement tool. And usually we believe in the CI, continuous improvement of the process in the organizations is a must. It's not a substitute for innovation. Innovation would get ideas from benchmarking to go further and give new ideas. And this is what we will see in the following episodes. How can we apply methods in order to go for innovation rather than only just take benchmarking as a source of idea? We have to avoid the following. Benchmarking for benchmarking. Is benchmarking an objective? No way. Benchmarking is a tool or a mean to improve. If you just, we did the benchmarking, then we have to move to progress, focusing entirely on companies of performance measures rather than the process and activities that enable the achievement of good practice. Look how can we improve the process, not only to compare, but how can we improve and expecting that benchmarking will be quickly or easy. Never put this in your mind. Benchmarking needs effort, patience, resources, and if we fail, we have to go again and try better methods of benchmarking. So this is always keep in mind and avoid just thinking that benchmarking is just a, an objective by itself. It's a way to improve. What are obstacles that may face us, face us in the benchmarking? Sometimes if we go only for internal focus, focus, we have to read both the internal environment and versus the external environment. And benchmarking, we have to go for both. But sometimes we have some obstacles in the internal benchmarking. Sometimes we have obstacles in gathering information from the external environment. Objective too broad and always narrow the objective. If you go too broad in the scope or the, in the objective, you cannot benchmark. Narrow it, well-defined scope of benchmarking is a must. And even if you set unrealistic timetables for the tasks, you will accelerate the result, but you will affect quality. So put realistic timetables for tasks. And if the team is very poor, poor team composition, this will affect negatively the process of benchmarking. Improper emphasis, emphasize what are we benchmarking. And insensitivity to partners, this is another obstacle. Would they help us? Would partners will agree with us? And if we, have, we don't have top management support, very limited top management support, this is a major obstacle in the uh, benchmarking process. So always we should agree with our top management, providing vision, providing us with the influence in order to move. So all of these are obstacles, but we have to set how can we remove these obstacles and move forward for better results of our organizations. So by this, we reach the end of the concept of benchmarking value. It's very important to keep in mind that this value will help us to move to a better performance, lowering the time, lowering the cost, and improving the quality. So in this episode, we covered lots of issues towards achieving excellent benchmarking in order to achieve the value of excellence. Keep in mind that benchmarking is just an operational value, and the highest value is achieving excellence. Choose a good team, 
Top management support is a must. Have good resources, realistic time schedules. The team agree on this and always support with your partners. Make a good relation, a strategic relation with your partners. This will help us to move. However, there is another methodology against benchmarking which started in Japan. It's called Blue Ocean Strategy. What is a Blue Ocean Strategy? And why it's an ocean? The concept of an ocean is a market. The market is an ocean full of competitors. The competitors are like sharks. And you are comparing yourself with the best performers in the market. So you are swimming in a red ocean full of competitors. And you are trying to achieve better than them. The philosophy of blue ocean strategy is a Japanese strategy. Why not to swim alone in a blue ocean with innovation, in new ideas, and let others benchmark you. Don't benchmark others. This is another philosophy. It's totally different from the concept of benchmarking, which means we have to go in new strategies. We have not to look to others. Let others compare themselves to us. And by this strategy, Japan set lots of achievement in business, especially in automobile industry, in IT communication. So what we recommend at the end of this episode, that let's combine both strategies, benchmarking strategy with all what we mentioned, with the blue ocean strategy, and we compare this. We start by new ideas, then compare yourself. Are you leading the market or still ahead? Continuous improvement is a must. In the following episodes, we'll go for some models that we use in order to be very innovative and use the uh, outputs of the benchmarking study. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.